In this video, we're going to learn how to use the array modifier in Blender. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to carry our Learning Blender Slowly series, and we're going to talk about using the array modifier. Now, a lot of the things that we've done in the channel so far have related to cars, car modeling, uh, creating stuff in Fusion 360, and ultimately the goal is to create stuff in Blender. So we've been doing a lot of learning slowly to learn the tools, how to manipulate geometry, and the next thing that I really want to talk about is the array modifier. And mainly because this one was really tricky for me and I want to make sure that we at least talk about it if you want to model rims in Blender. Now, I will say that I much prefer modeling this type of geometry in Fusion 360 and just importing it. It's much quicker and easier for me. I feel like I have more control, but everybody's different. So we're going to talk about how we can do this in Blender. The first thing that we want to do is we want to get started with a new general document. And I'm going to select everything. You can simply hit A on the keyboard, X, and delete it. And I want to get started first by going over to my properties, in this case, my scene properties, my units, and changing these to imperial. I also want to change the length to inches, and this is just going to make it a little bit easier when I start creating objects. Now that our units are set, we're going to start by going to add, mesh, and we're going to begin with a mesh circle. Now, in the last video, we talked about a couple different ways that we can model. We looked at vertex modeling, and that's going to be the approach we take for this example. It doesn't have to be it, but I think it's a little bit easier for us to understand. So the first two bits of information we need to make sure that we have down is the number of vertices and the radius. So I'm going to model a 20-inch rim, so I'm going to put my radius value at 10. The number of vertices are important. We don't want so few vertices that we don't actually get a round object. We don't want too many because it just becomes really complicated. The balance is somewhere between 40 and 80 vertices. So in this example, I'm going to go on the high side and put 80 in. But again, more vertices doesn't necessarily make it easier to work with. The other thing that I want to do is I'm going to set the rotation about Y to 90 degrees, which will flip that up on end. I'm going to model in the positive X orientation. So I'm going to switch to my X forward view. I'm going to zoom in, and I want to go into edit mode. Inside of edit mode, if we have our vertex select on, you can see the number of vertices that we have. The entire point of this is for us to only model a section of the rim. We're going to be looking at a four spoke design, so we're only modeling a quarter of the rim. This means that we need to get rid of anything else that we don't need. And in this case, what I want to do is I want to box select the vertices that I want to keep. I'm going to go to select, invert, or control and I on the keyboard, and then I'm going to hit X to delete vertices. We want to make sure that the number of vertices we have will pattern properly. So we will need to make sure that we do have a vertex at both the Z and the Y axes. This means that when we begin to create our array, we'll have vertices that will merge together. Now that we have these vertices, I also want to change another setting. In the transform pivot point, we're going to be using the 3D cursor option for most of it, which means when we scale, we'll be scaling toward the 3D cursor. We want to select this entire edge. There's a couple different ways that we can do it, but since we're on vertex selection mode, I'm going to hold down Alt on the keyboard and simply left click. Then we're going to extrude this out. Again, you can go up to your options and use extrude, which is going to be E on the keyboard. So we're going to hit E, which will allow us to extrude these edges. And then we're going to hit S for scale. And because we're scaling toward that 3D cursor, you can see that it's just going directly toward it. We're going to be creating a small lip of the rim. And with this still selected, I'm going to zoom in and rotate slightly, and I'm going to hit E to extrude. And then we can either hit X on the keyboard, or you can click the middle mouse wheel. The middle mouse wheel will lock it to an orientation. You can see in this case, it's locking it to Z, which we actually want to lock it to X. It depends on your view. And in this case, X is going to be the better option. Again, we're going to extrude E and then hit S to scale down, E again and an X to extrude forward, then E again, and S to scale. So we're starting to build out a section of the rim. 
we're going to apply a subdivision surface modifier to smooth this out. We can make changes at any time, but for right now, this is going to be the basis for it. The next thing that we want to do is I'm going to switch over to edge selection mode, and I want to begin creating the spokes. Remember that we are going to be patterning this, so you can either decide to create spokes at both the start and the end, or we can create them somewhere in the middle. It's going to depend on the number of edges that you have to work with and what you want your rim design to look like. For me, I am going to create it based on these two edges here and these two here. So we're going to hit extrude, so E on the keyboard, S to scale, and begin scaling that in. I'm going to hit E on the keyboard, X, and I'm going to start extruding this backward. And without extruding again, I'm just going to hit S to scale to bring those in. So I start to get a little bit of shape to this. The next step for me is going to be to add another object. So we're going to go to add, and we're going to add another mesh circle. We want the same number of divisions. We're going to rotate this about 90 on the Y axis. And then we can scale it down using S on the keyboard. I'm going to scale it down just slightly smaller than what I'm working with here. Switch to vertex mode. And again, I want to delete all the vertices I don't need. So X on the keyboard will let me go to my delete menu and just select vertices. Now we're going to hold down Alt, extrude, so E, then S to scale, and begin building out the center portion of the rim. E, X, I'm going to scale that in a little bit, E and S, then I'm going to hit G and X to move this. You can do as much or as little as you want here. It really is just going to depend on what you're trying to design. Don't spend a ton of time making something here, but just try to get something that we can pattern. So again, E and then X, I'm going to extrude that back, and I want to begin connecting this spoke to it. So the way that I'm going to do this is by selecting a vertex, shift selecting another one, and then we're going to use merge. This is going to be M on the keyboard, or you can go to your mesh menu, merge, and at last. It's much quicker to use the M shortcut, but remember that we're going to be doing at last, so make sure that you select the correct vertices in the correct order. So this one's going to be first, hold down shift, select that one. Make sure that you are seeing this on screen. So if you don't see both of them selected, you want to make sure that you do have them both selected. I'm going to do the same thing over here to these other three. And once again, add as little or as much detail as you want. The main focus of this video is to understand the array modifier. Lastly, I'm going to hold down Alt, select this entire inner loop, and I'm going to extrude it back in the X direction. I'm going to change my transform pivot point to bounding box center. Then I'm going to use S to scale this inward. If you want, we can fill this in by going to our options for face and grid fill and allow it to just create as many quads as possible. You'll notice that we don't actually get a complete split in the middle. We can add loops by using control R, but you can see that it's trying to divide things up in a way that just doesn't make sense for us. So one way that we can fix this is by using our knife tool. I can hit K on the keyboard, and I can just work my way through, connecting it over here, and make sure that we go all the way to this last vertex, and then hitting Enter. It's not a perfect solution. There are other ways that we can do this, but for right now, it's going to work. Now, before we get into using the array modifier, there is one option that we do have inside of here. So you can either select everything by hitting A on the keyboard, or you can use box select, assuming that you do have X-ray on, so you can select through. Then we can go to Mesh, Extrude, and there's a Spin option. When we use the Spin option, we want to make sure to use duplicates and set the number of steps that match our design. In this case, it'll be four. One of the things that we have to consider when we're using the Spin option is that we're actually making new geometry. We're going to need to select everything. Again, if you have X-ray on, you can box select or you can hit A. And then we want to merge by distance. You can see that we removed 387 vertices. These are all the vertices that were overlapping. This is a great option if you want a complete mesh object, but it's not a great option if you want to modify the design. So for example, if I move one vertice, none of the other ones move because it's not a pattern. 
So for this example, I'm going to use Control Z to undo before I did that. And we're going to move our way into object mode and learn about the array option. From here, the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go to my modifiers and add a subdivision surface. I'm going to use two for my levels viewport and then I'm going to right click and shade smooth. So this just gives us an idea of what the rim looks like. The way that we want to use an array modifier is to first create what's called an empty. We do that in the same method by going to add, but this time we're going to go down to empty and plain axes. It's important that we don't scale the axes using the S key, but change the radius value here if we want it to be bigger or smaller. What we're going to do is use the axes as the object for us on the array modifier. So we'll select our mesh, go to add modifier and select array. We want to turn off the relative offset, but use the object offset. You can either use the dropper icon to select your empty, or you can use this icon here to select the empty. The reason that we're seeing this object in this orientation is because we need to rotate the empty. So to fix this, we'll select the empty, select R, Y, and 90. So we just rotated the object 90 degrees about the Y axis. Now we're going to rotate about the X axis, so R, X, and we want to go the correct orientation. In my case, it's going to be R, X, and 90 because we're using this for four different instances. Then we will select the original object, go back to our array modifier, and set it to 4. Now it doesn't look perfect and there are a few reasons why. The first reason is because we're not merging. So we need to select merge and also make sure that we're merging the first and last copies. We're still seeing problems on the edges and the main reason for this is because our subdivision surface modifier is before the array. So if we drag this up before subdivision surface, it is able to reconcile those differences. Now we have an object that has a pattern to it, and if we go back into edit mode, all we have to work with here is going to be a single or a quarter section view. This means that we can make any adjustments that we want. For example, if we want to add another edge loop, Control and R, and we can tighten up the crease here. We can do Control and R and add an additional lip here. For example, I can move that out in the X direction and we can make any changes that we see fit for our rim. I'm going to select Alt on the outside, and I'm going to extrude this in the X direction, and then I'm going to reset my transform pivot point to 3D cursor. I'm going to extrude this and scale it, and then I'm going to extrude it in the X direction. Extrude, scale in, extrude, X direction, and so on. So you can see here that we are building out a rim in 3D with the array modifier and everything is put together and nice and smooth. This is probably the best way to go about creating an object like this when we have a patternable object and we want to make sure that we replicate it. There are a few challenges or a few things that you might run into, so let's just take a quick look at those. The first thing that you might run into when you're building out a rim like this is that you might need to go back in and recalculate the normals. So we're going to select everything by saying all, go into mesh, go to normals and recalculate normals. You might even need to flip them. There are some other things that you might want to do to make sure that everything works and that is going back into your array and making sure that the merge distance makes sense for your object. Sometimes you'll find that increasing this is going to give you very bad results and decreasing it is not going to give you anything at all. So the default value is generally fine, but sometimes you might need to increase or decrease this a little bit. So just pay close attention to some of these values. Make sure that you are merging using first and last copies and that any other modifiers such as a subdivision surface come after your array. So that's going to be as far as I go with this. You can obviously spend as much or as little time as you want on this design and really just make sure that you take your time, think about the process and ensure that you are comfortable with creating an empty and creating the array. So at this point, if you have any questions, please let me know. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.